We're talking about how it feels like it hasn't been that much time has elapsed mm -hmm. and I just keep going back to that time and seeing those people who just came from far and wide mm -hmm. to pay their respects to your husband. Mm -hmm. Do you still feel that lingering love and support, mm -hmm. not just from Arizonans? Yeah. I feel it everywhere I go. People stop me literally everywhere in airports, on the street, in the malls, you know, wherever I may, might be to tell me. Uh, a lot of people will say, you know, I didn't vote for him, but I really respected him, which I appreciate very much. Um, I hear from everybody. I, one person stopped me and told me that she was not from the United States and said that in their country they made it a holiday the day of his funeral so that everyone can stay home and watch it. I mean, things like that are overwhelming to me. Right. It's amazing. He was beloved everywhere. He really was. Mm -hmm. So you've seen an overwhelming show of support, but you've also yeah. seen some on social media people <laughs> acting rather despicable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for me, I mean, I called him out on it, which I don't regret doing at all. Um, I, I think it, it not only is that kind of stuff unnecessary, but um, it's just... It, it, this this lack of decency that's going on right now and this lack of civility that's going on right now is not acceptable in any stretch. And the fact that it's anonymous on Twitter makes it even worse, you know. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, it's it, life goes on and we're all fine and, you know, in spite of all that stuff. How are you navigating the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. in a world without John McCain? Yeah. He was such a force, a uh, life force. I mean, he everyone that ever knew him knew that he was just this incredible supernatural being. And and certainly was a leader of our family, obviously. And so it's it's navigating now with our leader gone and, and me taking up the mantle of it and each day questioning, Am I doing it right? <laughs> would he appreciate would he appreciate this? Would he like it? Would he approve? You know, all those kinds of things right now. He put so much tender, loving thought into those final mm -hmm. details, mm -hmm. right? With yeah. all of his funeral services Yes, and he did, yeah. Was there anything that he said he wanted for you? Well, he wanted, uh, he wanted me to understand and to know that this, he didn't want it to be, although it was a funeral, he wanted it to be in some ways a celebration. And so his plans showed that in, in the choice of music and in the, the places that he chose to be in. And then, of course, when we actually buried him, he, um, he, I was, he was actually incredible to watch him plan this because I'd have to go in and out of the room. I couldn't, I couldn't listen to it. And he was just on target with it and was very resigned to the fact that this was going to happen. And when it did, mm -hmm. the whole family was there yeah. at your ranch. Mm -hmm. Everybody except for Jack because he was overseas. He was in Afghanistan at the time, and we couldn't get him home in time. But everyone was there. He was surrounded by his family and some very close friends. And uh, he died uh, very peaceful. We, we had taken his bed and pushed it out onto our deck. We were up north. And at the very time that this was going on, we had his playlist on. And My Way by Frank Sinatra was playing. And a hawk, one of our hawks that he loved, was on the back, the roof behind me, and then literally took off from the roof, swooped down, landed in a tree facing us, but not a far tree, a close tree, which is unusual. And John literally took his last breath, last breath. And it was just he did it his way. I mean, that's exactly where he wanted to be and what he wanted to be doing. And and it couldn't have been, you know, for him. I think is it was as good as it could get. I mean, in, in a situation like that. We're coming up on his passing mm -hmm. and his birthday. Mm -hmm. How will the family? How mm -hmm. will the family celebrate him? Yeah, we have uh, a small. We call it a small party plan for family and very close friends. Uh, on the the twenty fourth, we're going to be doing that, and that's for the people that were the closest to us and that you know worked hard and all those things. And then on the 29th, we're gonna celebrate his birthday. And that's with a big, we call it the, the Hotel California party. Because as you know, in McCain world, once you check in, you never check out. <laughs> and so all of our, our, our folks that work for us and campaign for us and all that from around the country are coming. And we're having a big party for his birthday. That is so awesome. Do you, yeah. do you prefer being at the ranch where you had those last moments with him or have you appreciated the distraction of travel? I'll be honest, I have appreciated the distraction of travel right now. I, I've been back, certainly been back to our ranch, but it's, it's a little bit hard right now, I'll be honest. And, but, I'll, you know, it'll come. It'll be all right. Because it was, we both loved the place so much. I just was kind of wanted to get away from the memory a little bit. Megan has shared that mm -hmm. she hasn't been back. Yeah, she hasn't. She's, of all of mine, she's having the hardest time. And 
Uh, she's going to this weekend. She's she and her husband are going to go to John's grave. She's not been to his grave, and so she's going out to his grave this weekend. And that it's a big step for her because she's really had a hard time with this. But her father would not want her to mourn and dwell on this. He would want her to move on and and celebrate and be happy. And so I'm hoping that this will fix it for her a little bit. It won't solve it, but it'll f fix some of it. I think. You mentioned people grieve in different ways, mm -hmm. and with seven different mm -hmm. kids, I'm sure mm -hmm. you've seen. The Everyone's spectrum. a different, <laughs> different, different. Pro it's a different process for everyone. How's it been for you? Um, it's you know I have good days and bad days, uh, more good than bad. But um, but it, you know there are honestly days, and as we draw into this week. Uh, where I, I get sad and I, you know, tears come to my eyes. But John did not want me. The one thing he wanted and impressed upon me was don't be sad, but let's remember the good times and remember the joy of not just being married in a family, but the joy of life. And that's who he was. So if I can honor him in any way, it's that way. It's by, by doing what he asked me to do. Your family says that you've really been the rock in all of this. <laughs> what does comfort you? Oh, what comforts me, I think, is in knowing the kind of outpouring of love that people had for him and for me, and knowing that, that he, his impact on so many millions of people was, was just so impressive. I mean, he really, he in many ways changed uh, policy and changed public life to a great degree. And he's just, he was just such a, a wonderful man that, and he was a lot of fun to be around, and he used humor the way it should be used. I mean, he was just, you know, when things were really kind of looking looking bad no matter where we were, he'd always wind up wisecracking about something and bringing us all, you know, to, it, to laughter. And, and those are the things that I want to remember. Certainly. And uh, it's interesting because we mentioned social media. We kind of see a filtered window to your reality, yeah. right? So we see the we see the lows. You lost Burma, which mm -hmm. was, I'm sure, extremely sad. Oh, it was John's dog. I know. Yeah. But Burma was never the same after John died. She was just very, she's grieving, grieving, grieving. And I think this is part of it. So they're up there together now, having a good time, <laughs> throwing the balls and doing all that kind of stuff somewhat comforting then. Yeah, it is. To me it is. It's comforting. We also saw the uh, ultrasound picture. So you have a grandson. Yes, a grandson way. due literally any day. I mean, we're, we're all sitting here on our phones, you know, waiting for the, for the text that goes out. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. And the possibility, how beautiful would that be? Because the due mm -hmm. date is very close to John's birthday. Right. And to the day he died. So uh, it will, you know, this week's going to be both uh, you know, a challenge, but also a wonderful thing. So either way, it's going to be a good, good week. Megan has been counting the days. That's mm -hmm. kind of her yeah, pace, right? It is, yeah. And she says, our culture avoids any and all reminders of death and mortality. It's still one of the ultimate taboos. It's like people don't know what to say or how to act, mm -hmm. especially as tougher, it gets tougher as time passes. Mm -hmm. have, have you felt that way as well? Or do you feel like talking about it helps you heal? I think talking about it to some degree helps me heal. Um, uh, you know, I, I do, I have done it differently than Megan, obviously. I, I, it's a challenge, but it's also, um, I, you know, I, I, had, I had a year and a half to really be with him and really, really talk about things and really get organization together with regards to the family and how to handle things. And he was very helpful with that. And so I, I think I had more time with him than Megan did. And so uh, I'm hoping that this will pass for her, you know, get, get a little easier for her. And Megan's also been very, uh, she shares, she's a sharer. Yeah, she <laughs> so is a she's sharer. Shared about <laughs> on social media. And in many ways, it's cathartic for mm -hmm. the rest of us who loved him so much, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And she says the thing that she really misses the most is wanting to have that instinct to pick up mm -hmm. the phone and call mm -hmm. him. What do you miss most? I miss his voice, obviously, and I miss, uh, I miss the complete usual chaos up at the cabin between bark grilling and between, you know, John barking orders at people and the dog running and the, you know, just all of that con lovely confusion that took place. I really miss that because it was always, you know, it was always something special when he was home. And I, 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 I miss just being a part of all that, you know, being in the whirlwind. <laughs> Does it feel funny that because of social media and because of uh, the public persona for many of your family members that you're not grieving in private? Does that feel voyeuristic or is it 
is it helping mm -hmm. some? Well, you know, we our family's never been private, and uh, I knew that when the funeral was taking place, uh, I I realized at the beginning of it, you know, really when I first saw the crowds and the size of them and everything, that this is more than a funeral. It was it was way more than that, and the the country stopped for an entire week. Uh, and came together, which was, John would, would have been so proud about that and so happy about that. Um, so for me, it was more about, I felt like I had to really not just be brave for my family, but for the country as well. Um, it was, it was prob maybe a burden I put on myself, I don't know, but I felt like it was very important to be, to be strong and, and to be together with this whole thing. And John would have wanted that. He, was, he didn't like criers, so. <laughs> But understood it, I mean, right? Yeah. So how often do you find yourself calling on his wisdom, mm. calling on his guidance? Mm. All the time, all the time. Thinking, what would, he, what would he do in this situation? What would he think? Does he approve? Does he, you know, is he, what, how would he do this kind of thing? I'm, I'm, I, all the time I'm doing that, all the time. And we talk about the climate of our country right yeah. now, yeah. Um, where people seem more motivated by fear and anger mm -hmm. than passion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you started that hashtag when we lost him about Mavericks Needed mm -hmm. and in the arena do you feel like people are continuing with that call to service and uh, push to mm -hmm. take action instead of mm -hmm. just speak negativity well I yes I think so and and what I have come to realize and, and what I'm going to be doing is uh, a movement that's acts of civility and I'm, this week I, I'm going to start asking people to go out and perform an act of civility, no matter what it is. Maybe talking to someone that you really disagree with or, and, and realizing that it's okay to disagree or maybe seeing a, a, a relative that you weren't fond of, but, but it, you know, just trying to, trying to come together in some way. And then I want, I'd like them to post about it on social media, you know, hashtag acts of civility. And that's something, I was trying to figure out a way to commemorate John this week, and that's something that just came to me, and it was like, this is really great. That He would like this. <laughs> he would approve. It's tangible, and it's something it that is. everyone yeah. can do, whether it's something simple or really right. going out of their comfort zone. Right, so, right. We hear a lot of people say that they wish we had a John McCain in the world still. With the way so do things, I. <laughs> with the way things are lately, and just the other day, we were pulling back the clips from mm -hmm. 2008 mm -hmm. um, in the campaign where he stopped one of his supporters mm -hmm. and corrected them when mm -hmm. they called Barack Obama yeah. an Arab mm -hmm. and you know that came up when Donald Trump was allowing those chants the mm -hmm. center back mm -hmm. um, and people saying we don't have that mm -hmm. leadership that fearless I'm gonna stand up and mm -hmm. do what's right anymore. Yeah. I, I agree I think we're missing that right now in our in our leadership and in our our House of Representatives and our Senate. Um, it's we I think we've lost our way a little bit and it's it's time for for not just the older folks like me, but for our young people, and I think the young people are going to be the driving force on this, to to really stand up against this and begin to take the pendulum and swing it back to where it was, which was we could work across the aisle, we could agree to disagree, we could we could um, you know we could be friends, and we we are friends. We should be friends, even though we disagree. It's okay to disagree. Um, but and and agree to disagree, you know those kinds of things, and debate something, but debate it in a, a fashion that's civil, and intelligent, not name calling and and rudeness and the kinds of things that we're seeing now. Uh, it, he would be very disappointed in what's going on right now. I know he would. Um, even with our president, he has specifically engaged in some disparaging comments about your husband. And it's something that you haven't really engaged in. Um, my worry is my children and my family. My job right now is to make sure my family is doing okay, and to continue the work that I've been doing. And so I, uh, my, those that's my focus and where I where I want to be and where I should be right now. What is your hope for 2020 and the future of the GOP? There's a lot on the line here. There is a lot on the line. There's a lot on the line on both sides because both parties have been led astray. It's not, it's not just the Republican Party. The Democrats are in disarray also. Um, it, I would like to see my own party uh, take itself back to, to the days of Ronald Reagan, and although I didn't know Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> I'd like to see, because we are the party of Abraham Lincoln, and, and, and 
stand for what we stood before and get away from this petty nonsense. Um, it's, it's not right. And I believe the Democrats feel the same way on, on their side. You know, we, both of us agree on some things and both of us disagree on many things. But that's okay. You know, that's what the, that's what the United States is all about. So why shouldn't we? Uh, you know, work together and work together uh, on our differences as well. But I think I t b truly believe in the United States of America that this pendulum is going to swing back and we're going to be at, at least partially back to where we were and maybe having learned a lesson or two about where not to go. I think that's the, uh, the hope for the decency mm -hmm. of decorum to return yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, what do you think John's advice would be now to politicians and voters? It, stop it. Get back to work. Um, he would be, I think he'd be very direct and very honest about it and say it's not only is it time to get back to work and work across the aisle, but it's necessary. We have a foreign policy that's in complete disarray. Uh, the United States is perhaps not well respected in some places as we were before. Um, these are things we need to worry about. These are things that will affect my grandchildren and all of us. So unless we get a handle on what we're doing as a country and as, as our parties, um, we could really go down a dark rabbit hole with that. It, it's dangerous. You didn't vote for Donald Trump before. No, we know that I Joe wrote Biden, my husband in. <laughs> yeah, we know, that, um, we know that Joe Biden is a personal family friend. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. he reached out for an endorsement when it came to that, would that be something you'd consider? You know, Joe is a, a good family friend. He's a member of our family. We feel like that. He, wor he helped us through an incredibly difficult time. But um, I'm not going to get involved in any of it. I love Joe to death. I love a lot of people, but I'm just, it's, it's not my place to do that right now. I'm not, I'm not a member of Congress. I'm not elected. I appreciate that people say, think I have a great opinion, but, but I'm not going to get involved in it. So still a no for still any no. potential. Still a you no. You have a lot of people who would really want <laughs> to see you in <laughs> elected office. I know. What I intend to do uh, I, I, during both conventions and during this process is again, let's talk about civility. Let's not just talk about civility, this, let's produce acts of civility. Because we're hearing it on both sides. We need to be civil, need to be civil. Let's do it. Let's actually do it. What about your husband's uh, Senate seat? Mm -hmm. Today, the latest poll shows uh, Mark Kelly pulling ahead of McSally mm -hmm. by five points. Mm -hmm. It's early, that's what I say. Listen, I, I've been in a spot where my husband was, they counted him out in 08. They, he was done, 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 and he wound up getting the nomination. So uh, I, not, anything can happen at this point. I've, that I have learned through all these years of doing this with my husband. They're like super early. Yeah. It's tough to say, but what would you think is John's greatest legacy? Um, I think his greatest, greatest legacy is that he was a man of honor and decency and when he would meet with people around the world, he, would, he wouldn't always agree with them. The countries always didn't agree with them, but he, they knew he told the truth. They knew that what he said was the truth and they, that they could count on that, rightly or wrong, whether they liked it or not, they knew where we stood. And um, that kind of leadership and that kind of, of decency in politics is lacking right now. So we, we miss his calm voice and we miss his, his, um, his, his absolute endearing effort to love this country and, and keep it together. And that's really what he did. That's what he was all about. Has there been one great lesson for you in this past year on life or love or loss or family that has been kind of the thing that you're marinating in? Um, for me, I think it, it most, most soundly was that I survived it. You know, I survived his death and life goes on because you know I, there was a point I thought maybe I'm not going to I'm not going to make it in this. I'll be honest with you towards the end with him, and uh, that life goes on and life life really is good and it's lovely. I miss him, but I know I'm going to see him again. So, <laughs> so uh, you know we're going to do the best we can to to live on and keep his legacy alive and and do good work along the way. You've been doing a lot of good work. Um, I've seen Thank all you. the different things, the doctor, you've traveled overseas, everything. Um, what has been the toughest to do without him by your side? Um, I accepted an award uh, for him in, uh, in, I've accepted many awards for him, but one that was in Munich. The Munich Security Conference was his baby and he loved it. And this year they gave a, a huge award, named some other things after him. 
And it was diff those two days were a little hard for me because it wasn't too long after he passed. But um, it, it, you know, he'd be so honored by all this. And it, the least I can do is be there and to thank people and to be and to represent him. It's the smallest thing I can do. Well, we appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for your time today. Was there anything that you wanted to add? I didn't ask. No, I think you did a good job. Okay, <laughs> I love the acts of civility. Yeah, yeah. I think, so people will I think it launches that. tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. For your time. Thank you.